What makes something an asset and a liability is the two, are the two most important words in business, cash flow. Which way is the cash flowing? So an asset, if the money is flowing into your income statement, it's an asset. So my rich dad would say, if money is flowing into your pocket, it's an asset. If money is flowing out of your pocket, it's a liability. So the average person, they go out and they buy a house, they say, oh, it's an asset. But every month, it's flowing straight to the bank. So your money flows straight to the bank. Not that intelligent. You know, I want the money to flow from the bank to me. So it flows to the bank. Or what they'll do is they'll buy a stock or a bond or a mutual fund, and it's an asset, and it flies straight to Wall Street. Not your asset, it's Wall Street's asset. And the third line, when you look under expense, first line is tax. So the average employee, like my poor dad, with a high paying job, the money comes in, goes straight out the taxes and to the government. Make sense? So when you, when you get a job, first line, taxes, second, mortgage to the bank, third, your 401k or your IRA, straight to Wall Street. <laughs> but you think they're assets. It's not, they're assets, but they're not your asset. So that's one of the big things my rich dad taught me is you gotta control your cash flow. You want the money flowing into your pocket, not out of your pocket. So the one last thing I'll show you here is this, is this is the asset column. This is what rich dad worked for. He worked for assets. He didn't want a job. And this is my poor dad here. He wanted a high paying job. Different mindsets. So today, you know, <clears throat> I, don't, I, I still go home to Hawaii. I see my relatives and they keep, they call me Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, have you got a job yet? And I go, no, Auntie, I don't have a job. She goes, oh, too bad, you're unemployed. I said, yep. So their mindset is they've been programmed to be employees to work for the rich. And that's what my rich dad taught me. So it's all here in the financial statement, the rich work for assets, the poor and middle class work for money. Very different mindset. So I don't want a job, I just want the asset that produces income called cash flow, not taxable, not taxable. That's why the rich are getting richer. Welcome to our channel. Today we're delving into a topic that affects everyone, money. Specifically, we're going to talk about 15 money habits keeping you poor. These are subtle habits that, if not checked, can slowly but surely drain your finances. We'll be exploring each of these habits, shedding light on why they're detrimental and providing tips on how to overcome them. Knowledge is power, and understanding these habits is the first step towards financial freedom. Before we dive in, remember to like, subscribe, and comment to help support the channel. Now let's get started. Starting with habit number one, not tracking your expenses. Here's the thing. When you're not keeping an eye on where your money is going, it's easy to overspend without even realizing it. It's like driving with a blindfold. Sounds dangerous, right? That's because it is. By tracking your expenses, you give yourself the chance to see the bigger picture, to understand your spending habits and to make informed decisions. And that's the first step towards financial success. Remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your finances. Next up is habit number two, neglecting to create a budget. Picture this, you're on a journey, but you're not sure where you're going. That's what it's like to handle finances without a budget. A budget serves as your financial compass, guiding your spending decisions and saving habits. Without it, you're likely to drift aimlessly, making impulsive purchases and neglecting to save. You might end up in a sea of debt or worse, financial instability. A budget is your financial roadmap. Don't navigate without it. Moving on to habit number three, not paying off your credit card balances in full. You see, credit card interest rates can be quite the sneaky devil. They may seem small and insignificant at first, but if not promptly addressed, they can accumulate into a mountain of debt over time. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. It starts small but can quickly grow to an overwhelming size. And remember, every penny you pay in interest is a penny lost. So, make it a habit to pay off your credit card balance in full each month. Trust me, your future self will thank you for it. 
Paying off your credit card balance in full each month can save you a fortune in the long run. Our fourth habit is one many of us are guilty of, impulse buying. This is when you make unplanned, spur-of-the-moment purchases. It might feel good in the moment, but the financial drain it can cause is no laughing matter. To avoid impulse buying, try implementing a waiting period before you buy anything. This can be as short as one day or as long as a month depending on the cost of the item. Another strategy is to make a shopping list and stick to it. Impulse buying can be an expensive habit, it's one that's worth breaking. Habit number five is wasting money on lottery tickets. Now we all dream of hitting the jackpot, don't we? But let's face it, the odds of winning the lottery are astronomically low. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but the haystack is the size of a city. That hard-earned money you're spending on lottery tickets, it could be put to much better use. Think about investing it or saving for a rainy day. Remember, the house always wins. Invest your money wisely, instead. Our sixth habit is trying to keep up with others financially. It's a trap, folks. Comparing your financial situation with others is like comparing apples to oranges. Each one of us has unique circumstances, goals, and resources. Trying to match someone else's spending habits can lead you down a slippery slope. It's not about what the Joneses are doing. It's about what works for you. Living within your means is the key to financial stability. Focus on your own financial journey, not someone else's. Habit number seven is choosing renting over homeownership. Now renting may seem like the easy option, but it's a bit like running on a treadmill. You're moving a lot, but not really going anywhere. Homeownership, on the other hand, is an escalator to wealth. It may seem daunting at first, but with every mortgage payment, you're investing in your future, steadily accumulating wealth. Plus, there's the potential for property appreciation and tax benefits. Homeownership can be a great way to build wealth over time. Eighth on our list is not saving for retirement early. It's a common misconception that there's plenty of time to start saving for retirement. However, the reality is the sooner you start, the better. Here's why. When you save early, your money has more time to grow thanks to the magic of compound interest. Compound interest is when your interest earns interest, essentially making your money work harder for you. The earlier you start saving for retirement, the better. Habit number nine, frequently eating out instead of cooking at home. Now we all love a good meal out, don't we? It's convenient, tasty, and requires no dishes to clean up afterwards. But have you ever stopped to consider how much more you're spending on restaurant meals compared to home-cooked ones? Let's break it down. A single meal out can cost you the equivalent of several meals prepared at home. Over time, these costs add up, leaving a sizable dent in your budget. Eating at home is not only healthier but it can save you a significant amount of money. Next up, habit number 10, not negotiating your salary. So, you've landed that job you were eyeing, congrats! But have you thought about negotiating your salary? Many shy away from this, feeling awkward or apprehensive. However, this step can significantly impact your lifetime earnings. A few extra dollars now could translate into a much larger sum over the years. So, muster up the courage, do your research, know your worth, and don't be afraid to ask for it. Remember, it's not just about what you save but also what you earn. Habit number 11, neglecting to comparison shop. Did you know that by spending a few extra minutes comparing prices across different platforms, you could save substantially? That's right, whether it's groceries, clothing, or even insurance policies, comparison shopping can help you find the best deal and save money. It's all about making your money work harder for you. So next time you're about to make a purchase, take a moment to shop around. A little research can go a long way in saving you money. Our 12th habit, not taking advantage of discounts and rewards programs. These programs are designed to benefit you, the consumer, by allowing you to save money on purchases you were already planning to make. They can range from points programs at your favorite grocery store, to cashback offers on credit cards, to frequent flyer miles with your preferred airline. By not participating, you're essentially leaving free money on the table. Imagine all the savings you could accumulate over time. So, next time, don't just pay, but gain something back. Make your money work harder for you by using discounts and rewards. Habit number 13, not considering a side hustle. Now let's talk side hustles. They are not just about earning a few extra bucks. They can be a game changer for your financial landscape. Imagine the potential of an additional income stream, working in harmony with your primary job. It could help you clear debts faster, save for that dream vacation, or even invest for your future. Remember, it doesn't have to be a second full-time job, even a few hours a week can make a significant difference. A side hustle can be a great way to boost your income and reach your financial goals faster. Our last two habits are interconnected. 
14th, not seeking help from a financial advisor. This can be a game changer. A financial advisor can help you navigate the financial landscape, offering advice tailored to your specific situation and goals. They can provide insights into budgeting, retirement planning, and investment strategies that you may not have considered. They can help you avoid financial pitfalls and maximize your earning potential. Remember, there's no shame in seeking help. A financial advisor can provide valuable insight and guidance. And finally, habit number 15, not changing your money habits. The crux of financial freedom lies in the ability to adapt and evolve. Recognizing detrimental financial habits is the first step, but the journey doesn't end there. It's about taking that knowledge and implementing changes, transforming the way you handle money. It's about swapping out those old harmful habits for new beneficial ones. This is a continuous process, a commitment to improving your financial health for the long haul. Change is hard, but when it comes to your financial future, it's worth it. And that's a wrap on the 15 money habits keeping you poor. We've taken a journey through the pitfalls of not tracking expenses, the importance of a budget, the dangers of credit card debt, and the trap of impulse buying. We've exposed the lottery ticket illusion, the futile race of keeping up with others, the potential of home ownership, and the necessity of saving for retirement. We've also tackled the expense of eating out, the power of negotiating your salary, the wisdom in comparison shopping, the value of discounts and rewards, the potential of a side hustle, and the significance of seeking financial advice. Remember, small changes can have a big impact on your financial future. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and comment.